So we're going to get right into the event tonight. We have uh, two folks who are going to come up and share the microphone. And they're going to talk about what they do uh, around imaging and cancer surgery. So if we could ask Dr. Shona and Addy to come up and get us going, that would be great. Over here. Yes, Leo. Thank you everyone for coming here and uh, I thank the organizers for giving us this opportunity to, to talk about our, our research in optical imaging and uh, using it for uh, cancer, uh, breast cancer imaging. So uh, we work on optical coherence tomography and essentially it is an optical analog of ultrasound. So uh, you don't really have the acoustic or sound waves as you use in ultrasound but you use the light waves. And uh, depending on the interaction of these light waves with the tissue, you find out the information about the tissue. So uh, the light of photons would interact uh, differently with different kind of tissues and based on that differential uh, interaction, you try to differentiate uh, healthy tissue from tumor. Now, uh, when you are using light, uh, it gives you an inherent advantage of uh, giving high resolution images. So, uh, you can you this this technique is totally non-invasive and you can get up to a micron level resolution. So you can differentiate the cellular structure inside the tissue. So uh, what uh, what I have been doing and Stephen and I have been doing, we have been building uh, these OCD imaging systems. Uh, we are trying to optimize the uh, sensitivity of these systems and we take these uh, portable imaging systems in the hospitals. So we take it in the surgery room uh, where doctors are performing uh, breast conserving surgery or lumpectomies. So one of the very critical aspect of these uh, surgeries is that you don't want any residual uh, tumor to remain inside the body. So uh, a doctor who's performing the surgery doesn't have a very uh, clear idea of uh, or the microscopic view of the part he's resecting. So uh, nowadays what is done is that this restricted uh, tissue is taken to the pathologist and they take several days to a week and they, then they do the histology analysis and they say hey, uh, in, in uh, se several cases there is a positive margin. So I mean in 20 to 30 percent of the cases you have to perform a second surgery to remove the remaining or uh, residual uh, tumor tissue. What we aim to do is, uh, we have this very fast imaging technique which has a resolution which, which is very close to histology. We intend to use this in the operating room and we have been doing some preliminary experiments. So we try to uh, look at the resected tissue, look at the surface of that and we try to find out if there are any positive tumor margins. So if there are positive tumor margins, we uh, mark on that and that part is uh, taken to the pathologist and we get the histology images and we compare these uh, two images and uh, we try to see how our predictions have matched with the histology and so far we have done some limited study and the, uh, the results have been very promising so this is this is I mean uh, in some way this is what we have been doing and uh, from this point I mean one of the things uh, I would like to say is that um, we have to be very careful about the visualization and sometimes the visualization could be too uh, time consuming. So we are also trying to see if we can give some kind of additional effect. So uh, some kind of audio feedback or uh, to, to uh, help the surgeon to take a decision in real time. So uh, from now, at this point of on, onwards, I'll uh, leave this mic to Dr. Stephen Addy. We'll talk about his uh, research uh, in a similar area. Thank you. So uh, this is a visualization uh, forum, and um, so I'll try to give you some kind of a picture of the data sets that we acquire. As um, Dr. Sharma has pointed out, we, we're trying to do this uh, high resolution imaging, uh, microscopic uh, resolution imaging over macroscopic uh, fields of view. And uh, so, so you can imagine, for instance, you know, what we're trying to head towards is uh, to actually inspect a tumor cavity intraoperatively to actually give the surgeon feedback as to whether there's any tumor tissue left behind in the, in the cavity. So just to give you an idea, say um, uh, the data sets that we acquire are three-dimensional uh, data, data, so you, you get uh, information, um, of, uh, basically a, a cube or a cuboid of data 
um, which is uh, maybe you know, five by five millimeters by about three millimeters in depth. And so, um, if you if you uh, uh, sort of look at some of the calculations, a single data set uh, will come out to about uh, one gigabyte. And um, and so, if, if if for instance, uh, you know, just to give you a, a bit more of an idea, if I was to measure uh, uh, my arm, for instance. Now that would be about a, a terabyte worth of data quite easily. Um, so the challenges that we face um, you know, are, are, quite, are quite real, and that's why we really uh, you know, need visualization. Um, and so, and so the, 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 the other aspect of this is, not only do we need to uh, be able to visualize the, the data sets, but also uh, make some sense of them in real, in real time so that we can actually use them in real time now. And our systems acquire data at uh, you know, incredibly fast rates. So, so one of these data sets that I, that I talked about, about 5x5x3, five by five by uh, with, with some of our fastest systems can be acquired in under 10 seconds. So the question is, you know, you, you, there's no possible human way to, to do that visualization. And so we're also working on uh, computational uh, techniques to actually, uh, to actually sift through the data and, as it's being acquired, um, and and, uh, and uh, provide some other sort of multi-sensory uh, visualization, such as audio uh, audio renderings of the data, so that uh, you know, so these data sets can be interpreted and uh, you know, can actually be useful in real time. Um, so so that gives you a sort of a bit of a a bit of a uh, sort of a picture of the sort of challenges that we're facing. And so we'll be you know, happy to talk to you about uh, the challenges that you, know, you guys are facing, maybe something similar, and uh, you know, we, can, we can talk some more. So um, thank you very much.